So, I wanted to get a scope mount for my uh, inexpensive rifle, my PSA uh, M4 carbine that I like very much. And so I looked around, most of the scope mounts were something like $100, um, $100 $150 for a quick release scope mount. So what I came up was the lowest cost alternative of anything that looked very nice was an NC Star, and it is for a 30 millimeter or one inch adjustable scope mount, a quick release. I'll give you some of the features there. I'll just have the box there if you want to uh, pause the uh, video at that point. A well, quick look around at the box. So the box, the only thing that actually came in the box was the mount, two Allen wrenches for adjusting things, and the plastic bag that it was in. Had no instructions in it, but it seems pretty straightforward. The uh, thing on here about the uh, 30 millimeter or one inch are actually, if you can see them here, are actually inserts that you put inside of the scope rings. So very nicely made, uh, nicely machined, and they have a captive uh, lip to them. So we're going to take it out and shoot it, and then we'll take a look at it a little bit closer later on. But it looks very solid. I've adjusted it to put on my rifle, and we're going to take it out to the range. All right. Huh. One quick point that I didn't do in the first part of this is the cost for the mount. It isn't 150 it isn't 100 it was $25 on eBay. Most of the time you see them for $29, but I got a deal for $25. Alrighty, alrighty, out to the range we go. Okay, I have got my uh, was it NC Star scope mount on here. Got it sighted in just a little while ago. I'm shooting some decent groups with it here at 100 yards. And we're going to test and see how well it actually uh, holds the zero. Now, I tested it once. It looks like it holds it pretty good. So let's do some more shooting here. Using my lead sled today. Because it is really, really, really cold out here. It's 15 degrees. I'm going to get this done before my camera battery dies on me. Zeroed up here. Trying to use the lead sled just to take out any human error, shivering, and so on. So, safety's on. I'm going to take this. I'll, we'll, I'll show you back at the, in the uh, warm how this works. But taking my scope mount off, putting it back on again. Making sure that it is snugged up to the front so the recoil doesn't knock it that direction. Back on again. Safety back off. And let's do another target here. She's empty. Let's see what I've got. Very good. So that was the second time that I've changed this, um, taken it off, put it back. Actually, the third time that I've taken it off, put it back on. Every time it's still in the bullseye. Might have a little bit of a change on it. Uh, whenever I get to start doing some hand loads, maybe I'll end up uh, having a look and uh, seeing if I can quantify that or give you exact amount. But uh, we'll go down and take a look at the targets here in a minute. And thank you very much, and I'll see you whenever I'm back in the warm. All right, just wanted to show you this real quick here uh, before we go in and look at the targets. Just back from the range, and uh, had the uh, put the scope mount on it whenever I uh, to take it home. And like I said, I think I took it off three or four times at the range, and did not uh, change the zero hardly at all. And you can see here. The lever in this position here is locked. You pull back on this little tab here. You have to push it in, pull back on the lever, and up it goes, and boom. Takes it off. You can see there it's a single point um, for the cam there actually on the movable side of the plate um, for latching in. This here is your um, bar here that locates it actually on the rail for the cutouts. And what I do is, for the correct positioning for me, is I make sure that that's lined up like so. I push in on the opposite side to make sure that it's seated properly, of course, and then just gently take the lever back, and there you go. Now, I ended up uh, making sure 
that the, um, the lever was where I wanted it um, by adjusting it from this side over here with an Allen key. So you have to do that trial and error, but now that I have it set up, it seems to be working properly. So anyways, that is the mount on the rifle. And I'll give you, hopefully the sun's still out. Yep, sun's still out. And uh, we'll go in and take a look at our targets. All right then, I've got my uh, targets sorted out here and labeled, and I also measured them too, just to uh, give uh, some of an indication of the uh, potential accuracy of the rifle. Now I was using the um, lead sled, so it took out some of the human error. So this is my first group. That one is actually the, uh, this is the first measured group. Um, I did have some other groups, of course, as I'm trying to zero it in, but this is the first measured group. Okay, that's actually under an inch, 0.83. This is my second group. Now this is just with the, um, not moving the, um, the uh, scope mount at all. This is the first time, this is number three, that I moved the scope. And let's see here, let's see, you can see it right there. And that ended up being right at about an inch and a half. And you can see it's pretty close to what we did before. It might be like raised slightly. That's the third group. Fourth group is right here. And again, that's a little bit higher again. So, but I mean, this one is a little bit above the bowl. So and the other thing to keep in mind is that I was shooting fairly continuously there. Um, from the very beginning, so I'm not sure how many rounds I did now. This is Five targets. So there's 15 It had to be at least twice or more of that so 30 45 probably uh, cartridges total um, Oh, I'm sorry. So One and two didn't take the scope mount off This one I took the scope mount off put it back on and you can see it's pretty good this one here I took the scope mount off again put it back on and Pretty well exactly the same as the last one. This is target number five. And again, I took the scope off and put it back on. So you can see here, boom, boom, pretty well exactly the same. And the sixth one, which is actually, what was that? 1.3 inches, which is pretty well the same as that one and that one and that one. So in total, I took the scope off and put it back on again, one, two, three, four times and it pretty well kept the um, uh, the zero. What I was wondering too is, and a guy at the range was saying, well, maybe the barrel heated up towards the end, and that might be it because, let me try to get these back in on here. You should probably be able to see them. So this was straight on. Well, this is, this is just a little bit above. This one's straight on. Uh, let's see, three was here. Again, just a tiny bit above. A little bit more above, maybe a little bit more above and a little bit more above. So it's possible maybe my barrel, maybe, um, was uh, heating up a little bit and changing impact slightly. But anyway, so it looks like maybe about inch and a half is like the average for uh, this rifle, probably a little bit better than that at 100 yards. So very pleased with the rifle, very pleased with the uh, very inexpensive uh, scope mount as well. So um, if you uh, want to have an inexpensive scope mount, try out the NC Star. All right, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and out.